Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich's Garage and a look at the completed running chassis of the uh, Viterra Chevy K5 Blazer. Uh, this took about a, about a week to put it together. I think I have about 25 hours in it. Uh, There's probably a little bit more, a little bit longer than typical. Uh, what I want to do is just go over some of the uh, aspects of the build that I went through. I'll flip through the uh, directions just as a little outline for myself. There's a couple of things that were unclear. I'll tell you about some of the things that uh, I came across. But uh, building this was an absolute blast. It runs great. Uh, you can see the, the dirt on the tires because I've already headed out uh, climbing some rocks and doing some things. I haven't touched the body yet. Uh, I've been running it without the uh, body on, on it just so I can just see if anything's binding. Um, I've already rolled it over a few times, um, but everything runs great. So uh, uh, the quick overview of uh, some of the things I did here. The I went with the axial uh, 55T motor uh, that I crossed over from what was uh, the, the spec for the motor, because uh, the one that um, Horizon had uh, it wasn't available, so I wound up uh, buying this uh, axial one, which so far is running great. I've had no problems with it. The you see here the the uh, um, the Castle BEC uh, adjustable voltage regulator. Uh, this is switching regulator. I bought the software, uh, not the software, I bought the cable, so you can download the software to set the voltage to uh, actually setting it in the software. The 6.1 gave me six volts out. And the reason for that was the, the, the Spectrum steering servo that I mounted. Uh, this is a 6 volt servo that draws, uh, I believe it was 5 amps. The uh, speed control can only put out, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, uh, yeah, the, the um, receiver can only put out uh, 3 amps at 5 volts. So I went and uh, wired in the BEC so this way I have uh, plenty of voltage and amperage you can see it's a 10 amp unit uh, the battery fisk has plenty of power the uh, motor controller is I think it's a 65 amp you know constitute the output and the battery that fits in here is uh, uh, could put out I think it was 250 peak um, so to wire this in what I did was I bought um, I didn't want to splice into the motor control wires, I didn't want to splice into a battery obviously, so I bought the, um, I found a local RC hobby shop that I didn't know existed. Uh, and uh, so here's what I had gotten, uh, let's see what I got. This is the, uh, this brand of um, EC3 male female connectors they had, basically it's the connectors and the pins, you have to solder the wires in. I didn't have any wire, I went with this, they had this number 14 uh, silicone wire, so I got this. And um, all I did was, you know, uh, cut away some of the insulation, wrapped it around, soldered it. And now this is a, if I ever want to take this out, I can, like that. So there's no, no must, no fuss. If I have to uh, redo this, what I would do, if this ever failed, I would just cut these wires and uh, solder the new one into there. So this is uh, removable. It's just on double-sided foam tape is holding it down. That's what's got that mounted there. The one thing I did have to get, it's, uh, if you look here, this servo, steering servo, has this uh, plug cable in there. Take a quick look at that. Right in, right in here, this detaches. But it was too short to reach, so what I had to do was get a um, extension cable. And that one was this, was the uh, servo extension cable. And with that, uh, what I had to do was cut the 5 volt, the, the red wire, the, the uh, voltage weed. And you can see here, I'll hold this up a little bit, the wires are kind of tucked in. What I did was I cut the, uh, the red wire out of the plug for the BEC. And I cut the red wire out of the uh, extension cable. And then I was able to solder the BEC red wire to the 
extension cable red wire to power the uh, steering servo. So that's this here, shrink wrapped. Let me get a little closer to that. And then what I did was here on this, uh, you see here, here's the other end of this. This is the uh, the, the uh, other cable for the BEC. I just dipped this in liquid electric tape, electrical tape to uh, seal that. And I plugged this in so this way the common for the BEC is tied through this to the common for the servo, the steering servo. So here, this red wire, this is the steering servo plug. This is the BEC plug that I'm, I'm not using directly through this to power the unit. I'm just uh, soldered here the red wire. So that all worked with no problem. This uh, a spectrum receiver has a uh, AVC called Active Vehicle Control. They have a pretty cool video where they're driving uh, some RCs on ice and it, it compensates for the slide. It made my steering a little bit hypersensitive. Uh, I could have went and turned the gain down and stuff, but I really didn't need it. Uh, so all I did was, uh, there's if you put a bind plug in the disable port, it disables it. So I, I ran it, um, and then what I found is if it was going in a straight line, if it, if it bounced around a little bit, uh, it would think it had to make a steering correction and it would, would correct the wheels. So by turning that off, I didn't have that problem anymore. Um, everything fits in here pretty nice. And then I just put the cover on. And that works out, uh, works out well. The kit comes with this plate to mount your uh, motor controller on. Uh, the one that, that I picked up had rubber grommets and, and the uh, the bolt pattern, the spacing was the same as the mount, so I just mounted it direct rather than having it mount up a little bit higher, it was just a little bit more convenient, it wasn't blocking the wires coming out of here, so I went uh, that route. Let me get this in here. I'll screw that down in a minute. What else with the wiring? Uh, nothing else with the wiring, like I said, it all went uh, together pretty well once I was able to, to source these um, connectors then uh, and and the extension cable then it was, uh, was pretty easy to put together um, and so I put a screw in here so this way I can flip this over and doesn't all the wires don't fall out but this is the antenna for the receiver when I got the transmitter it came with two the one I bought it came with two receivers one was uh, this one and then the uh, I think it was what, what, a, um, a 410 or a 415, um, this one without the AVC, so I could have used that as well because this is uh, keeps uh, the, the receiver away from the elements, but uh, this is what I got going on. All right, so a couple other things. The kit comes with grease. I didn't use this. I used uh, Amsoil, Amsoil uh, synthetic multipurpose uh Grease, this is uh, uh, also a marine grease, it, it's waterproof, um, so you got water resistant, shear resistant. My, um, I will be running this in the snow, not that I'm looking for snow, but when the snow season comes around, I'm going to be using that. So one of the things that took me longer to do was all the uh, uh, metal ball joints I put a little grease on, even though the directions don't call out for it, but just, uh, you know, uh, if there's a friction point, I felt that, you know, I might as well just go ahead and do it. So that took a little bit of time. The other thing, they give you uh, some thread lock. Now, it's red, so I'm assuming that's more of the permanent as opposed to the blue. So I went with the blue because I have it. So I used the Permatex uh, medium strength. And I'll just keep an eye on things. Um, let's flip this over. couple things here. Um, you can see you got some uh, some road rash from uh, banging on some rocks with these uh, uh, plastic ones, but they've all held up fine without any uh, issues. One thing I made a mistake, uh, it's not clear in the directions. There's two different size uh, shafts here. So if you look, this one's a little bit longer. Maybe, um, let's get my hand out of the way here. Let's try it this way. That would be better. You see how it's probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. 
Um, one thing what I noticed when I was running this free, just letting it rotate, I was getting a little bit of, uh, at slow speed it wasn't noticeable, but then when um, going anything uh, you know, like mid-speed to, to high speed, I was getting a little bit of uh, vibration here, and I think it might be because this shaft's a little bit short. But, uh, you know, no real binding or anything. I mean, it runs, uh, I've been running fine through. Let me just run it, and if something happens, then I'll open it up. You know, this all has, it's packed with grease, the screw holes, the pinion gear in here. I didn't want to take it all apart, so let me see what happens when I run it, and it worked out fine. A little bit of a uh, interesting point with these uh, grub screws, these set screws, that um, there's a pin in here that holds this the, um, the rods, and these help to keep it from just sliding back and out, out, uh, either, out either side, it just acts as a friction point. Everything is metric as far as the Allen wrenches, but these I had to use, I believe it was a one, what I use, uh, one sixteenth Allen. So I don't know if just the metal is poor and, and uh, just the slightest bit of uh, friction and then the, the Allen wrench, the metric Allen wrench was jumping. So I tried the uh, one sixteenth and it worked fine, I was able to put them in. Uh, so that is that, you know, there's all sorts of upgrade stuff that you can get for this from, uh, you know, metal links, uh, metal skid covers that you can put on here. You can see how I've uh, scratched this up a little bit, but, you know, like I said, it's it's to be run. So um, I'm going to run it until something breaks, and then I'll upgrade it. But right now it's, it's, it's fine. The, if you look at my steering, this looks like a pretty extreme angle. Uh, let's see, can you see this? And I thought I was going to get some binding in there. And I said, well, let me run it and see what it does. But it, it, smooth as glass, I had no issue with it, even though, like I said, it is a little bit of an extreme thing. What I could probably do is shim, put some uh, washers and shim this uh, steering servo a little bit lower. But I, did, I was trying to, to keep it away from uh, the parent bar. Uh, and if it bound up, then I would have to shim that and then maybe adjust the length of this linkage. But so far, so good. I'll just give you a little heads up on what that looks like. The uh, It runs great. You know, uh, let me uh, I'll throw a battery in here real quick and uh, you can see it turn. So... It just worked out nice that the way this cable works and the way the width of this battery that everything fits in pretty good here. So just that drops in, and then uh, oops, thank you very much. I'm happy that I got the kit version versus the ready to run because it was for me it was really enjoyable putting this together. And uh, let me get my receiver turned on for a second. Pull my transmitter. There. Transmitter on. There you go. There's no binding whatsoever with this. And there's a fair amount of uh, uh, stroke on it. Uh, the shocks I just roughly ice set. I didn't go crazy about, you know, everything. But they, you know, it's, uh, it's got some rebound in there. It's uh, pretty good there. Uh, if I pick this up. That's the top speed. So you can see the rear wheels kind of jumping around because I think it's a, a portion of uh, this drive shaft a little bit. But um, it runs great. You know, I can uh, you see how much torque is in there, but you can make it, uh, make it a little crawl along. You know, the uh, receiver. Oh, that's sorry, the motor controller here has different settings with these jumpers. So first, of all, I said to lipo because those are lipo batteries I'm using, and I have the uh, the plug-in to jumper it for crawl mode, which means that 
when the uh, trigger's in zero position, it goes right to breaking as opposed to if I, uh, I don't have to extend the trigger to go into a break mode. You know, it won't roll, it won't coast, it'll, it'll stop immediately. You see how it, it stops. But um, all in all, it's been a very enjoyable experience to build this. It runs great. I'm really looking forward to uh, working on the body, but I'm probably just going to run this without the body on it because I'm thinking of about I may buy an interior for it. You know, I see there's a bunch of stuff online, uh, and this way I can run this and see if there's any issues. And the one thing you'll notice is I don't have the body mount posts on here because you have to drill holes in the body and have to decide if that's exactly what I'm going to do, if that's how it's going to mount or not. Uh, but um, yeah, that's a uh, that's everything. Um, you know, at some point I'll probably show you some videos of uh, running it outside. But uh, if you have the opportunity and the means, I would certainly uh, recommend this kit. You know, just like I said, it's my first time. Went together well. Uh, you know, and it, it's no headaches. I had no headaches really getting this uh, together. Um, you know, like I said, a couple little things like the. The steering rod wasn't, uh, assembly wasn't shown. I saw that in a later view of the uh, front end, and then I took a guess at how that goes together, and, and that worked out. Um, you know, the thing with the drive shift in back, you know, it doesn't really call out using the longer one, because this is the same frame for, if you want to go with the Ford Bronco, it's the same frame, just uh, you assemble it with its shorter wheelbase. Um, but um, there you have it. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you soon.